Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. In the U.S., it's easy to confuse Dia de los Muertos with Halloween. But the holidays have different origins and vastly different significance. The holiday that translates to Day of the Dead originated several thousand years ago with the Aztec, Toltec, and other native groups. They saw death as just one phase in life's continuum. And during Dia de los Muertos, they believed, the dead temporarily returned to Earth. Modern Dio de, Dia de los Muertos celebrations mash up these traditions with Christian ones. And this year in St. Louis, you'll have an opportunity to participate. That's thanks to the Missouri History Museum. Here to discuss this fascinating holiday and the plans for a local celebration is Elisa Bender. She's a board member for Hispanic Festival, Inc., which is hosting this year's events with the Missouri History Museum. Elisa, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. We're also joined by Maria Yaksek. She's a real estate agent, and she's also volunteering with the History Museum celebration. Celebration. Maria, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Do you have a question about Dia de los Muertos? Give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. Or you can send us a tweet at STL on air or email us at talk at stlpublicradio.org. Now, Maria, you grew up in La Paz, Bolivia, before immigrating to Missouri to attend college in Springfield. So what kind of memories of Dia de los Muertos do you have from your childhood? Well, the one that comes to mind is that right at noon on the November the 1st, um, we would have this wonderful ceremony. Um, the morning we would be preparing the altar. There will be an altar that we will prepare. And depending on the, um, we always had a black altar because we were talking about um, my grandparent. And um, so we would, um, right at noon, I still remember how we would light up the candles because that's when the, the souls are coming in mm -hmm. to our home. And we would um, definitely uh, be uh, praying. And um, the, the fun part of it uh, is that how that those two cultures, uh, I mean, those two customs of the Christianity and the, and the uh, prehistoric cultures come into play because the altar, of course, we'll have all this food and we would make these wonderful meals for, for my grandmother. Um, and that, that would be really, it's not my grandmother, it's my great grandmother, but I always call her grandmother because my grandmother was my mom. But anyway, um, so here we are with, with this be beautiful table set with all the delicious is stuff that my grandmother used to like. And of course, um, there's the crucifix. And then the interesting thing that I found it is that we always sprinkle the altar with holy water mm -hmm. because we only wanted to invite the the good good souls into the home. We didn't want to invite any of those any of the bad ones. Any of those bad ones. So I still remember that that sprinkling of the my grandma just sprinkling the whole altar to you know, ward off the bad spirits. To ward off the spirit, bad spirits. And I and again, this is something that we did right at noon on mm -hmm. November the the first, and then on November the the second, we said goodbye to them. And you mentioned that you would put out food. This was not food for yourselves to eat. This was food for the departed. Exactly. As a child, were you tempted, I, I'd like to eat that food? <laughs> well, we. It, the thing is, my grandma always said, now, you don't want to eat that food because it has no flavor. Because mm. remember, this is to feed the, the souls of the comes that are the people that are, the souls that are coming to our home. So you won't like it anyway because oh, okay. it will have no taste. So, and we respect it. it. Literally, we did respect because, I mean, it was understood that this was for them. Yeah, even as a child, you got that. Yeah. Now, Elisa, your mother is Bolivian, but you were raised here in America in what you described to our producers as Americanized Hispanic culture. <laughs> yes. Um, are there ways in which the Day of the Dead was different in sort of that Americanized Mexican version versus the Bolivian version? Well, you know, my mom was born and raised in La Paz, Bolivia also, but my father is uh, an American. So, and when I grew up here in the 80s and 90s, in grade school, I was the only Hispanic in school. And so... Those so are, not a lot of celebrations exactly, for this. Exactly. <laughs> and so even the other Hispanic families that we knew were mostly Mexican families. So I grew up with a Bolivian custom at home, but then a lot of Mexican families we enter, you know, uh, mixed with. Um, and then as you get older and, you know, things evolve and now it's more popular. So it's, um, 
you know, it's just, it's, it's a lot different. And I actually think a lot of people probably experience it the way I do, you know, just yeah. especially those, you know, with immigrant parents. It's kind of uh, doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So it wasn't something that was a major deal. Your, your family continued to do it, but it, it didn't interfere with, say, going to school. Oh, or... correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, now, Maria, uh, growing up in La Paz, I'm told the graves there are above ground. Is exactly. that correct? That so, is correct. So what kind of transformation did the cemeteries there go through on, on this Day of the Dead? Oh, it is a preparation a couple, couple, I would say a couple weeks beforehand, where people are already cleaning, making sure that it's all impeccable. Mm. Uh, they're painting. You know, painting uh, on the stones or uh, leaving they're, paintings? They're not stones because they're really like uh, structures where the, in, in they're like almost you can say um, little buildings like you know? a crypt because, or mausoleum because they keep in mind that you have it can be four stories tall where you put people and you know depending on where you bought the, the lot you know you have the lot that would be uh, there would be somebody on top of you oh, okay and there'll be somebody on top of you so there's pr- probably about four um, four or five stories, you know, and there's, of course, they're even painting the ladders, you know, because you have to use ladders for the ones that are at the top, you know. So it is a very big ordeal. Quite an undertaking. Yes. Our producer spoke with another local Latina, that's Lizette Mata, um, and she grew up in Mexico, and she described some of her most vivid memories of the Day of the Dead, including the skulls. I really, really like the skulls. I think the sugar skulls is one of my favorite things because my mom used to bring me to the market and she would, uh, you know, get for me a little basket. And that was a very beautiful basket with flowers and beautiful colors, especially in yellows and purples, which really is a way to celebrate and really those bright colors in Mexico. So we will go to what we call Alfiniques. And November the 1st and the 2nd, that was the only time of the year that you can pick these fruits of made of sweets and also the skulls. So I was very impressed that you can, you know, gather these skulls made uh, handmade by people that we call um, artesanos. And they are experts in, you know, uh, putting together the colors and everything is eatable. So for me, that was a great memory. And then I will bring those skulls to the cemetery and then that was a way to you know bring some of my favorite things to my father and it is not a party it's a tradition just to solemnly come and be there with the loved ones and sit down there and sing and bring their favorite food so those are some of the things that I really really remember. That's Lizette Mata describing her love of the sugar skulls. Um, Elisa Bender, what are some of the other components of Dia de los Muertos celebrations? Well, and it's just that it's a celebration. It is very lively, and it's not really a. It's not a sad. It's not a sad moment. It's, is it spooky? I mean, we're talking about communing with the dead. You know, no, I don't think it is at all. Actually, it's almost like. A party almost, you know, again, there's live music and it's happiness, you know, of course, people, you know, are sad, but you're remembering the good times and the things that they ate and the things that they drank. Um, You were putting pictures up. So, um, but there's a lot of components to it. The altars are the number one thing and, and each Hispanic country celebrates it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are the altars and the altars have different levels, uh, representing different levels to heaven. And then you have the favorite food out and then you usually have some water there because they'll be thirsty when they get back salt because that helps with the flavor Mm. when they get back they don't you know can't taste much um so and you know for the ones the altars that i i put together an altar for my brother i have crosses and i have things on the altar that i remember from him so that's sort of a way of i guess maybe why it's not spooky is this is a chance to remember these people that you loved. Exactly. And yes. so you still do put up an altar in your house or? I have a, a small one in my house, but I actually just built an altar at the history, in Missouri History Museum yesterday for my brother. So I was there all day. Um, and a lot of us were there all day building different ones. But that, yeah, I do one for my brother every year. And typically um, each um, dearly departed person would get their own altar? 
You wouldn't do like an altar for all your family members? It, it's again, a lot of homes actually that's what they do. Okay. Actually, a lot of people do do that. Um, everyone's just a little bit different. Um, you can do one for one person or a, most people actually do one big one and then put s- pictures of family and friends that passed away on that altar. So Maria, I know that you are really involved with the Missouri History Museum celebration, but I've also been told that you scaled back your personal observation of, of Dia de los Muertos a bit in recent years. Why is that? Uh, well, the thing is, um, I can't be off at, at noon mm. on November the 1st. Um, work and, calls. Yeah, work calls. And, um, and, but I still take that, that somber moment, you know, because um, in Bolivia, the way I was raised, it was a somber celebration. I mean, mm. it was, um, while you're still um, not, um, how can I say, it is not totally um, sad, sad, but it's more of a respect and um, we did not, um, um, the, the room was quiet, mm. you know, but at the same time, at the cemeteries, there are people that come and play music, um, and we pay them to come to the, to the tombs. Um, and is this sad music? It is some, somewhat sad. We use those uh, wind instruments, and they can be a little bit more of a, but again, it's more somber, I think, than like, why, wow, yeah, they're here, you know, it's more like, they're here. Mm-hmm. We're so happy that they're here. And they're bringing that message of abundance, you know, because it, it really coincides also with the agriculture, the beginning of the uh, the harvest season. The harvest season. So it is that sense of they're coming here to do bring us some blessings of fertility. So again, it's, it's just a little bit different the way I have always perceived it. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and to this day at noon, I still you know, take a moment and, and say a prayer. And I know that mm, my loved ones are with me at that moment. And in these prayers, are you asking God to take care of these people or are you talking to these people? What, what's, the, what's the focus of the prayers? Them. Okay. Yeah. Talking to them. To them, yeah. because uh, we do feel their, their presence. I mean, mm-hmm. and as, as a matter of fact, I, I kind of find it funny because I, when I send my, I tell my daughter, I said, I'm going to send you some people. I'm going to send you my people. And whenever she has something going on in her life, because, and, you know, I just feel that they're still watching over us. So, again, uh, there is not that separation and that feeling that death is, is terminal. Mm-hmm. It's just another continuation of that that life that it exists so it's not like they're gone mm-hmm. let's go to the phone lines uh, Mimi is calling from St. Louis hi Mimi you're on St. Louis on the air hi thank you so much for taking my call I wanted to I was so excited to hear this subject come up on the show today um, my first exposure to Day of the Dead was back in the mid 80s um, I studied at University of Missouri St. Louis in the art history department and one of my teachers Um, exposed us to the history and iconography of this celebration, and I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just such a wonderful celebration. And then a few years ago, the movie Coco came out, and it was a re, you know, um, imagining of this beautiful celebration the way that children could understand it. And I really encourage people, if they have young children, to rent the movie or, or find it on TV and show it to their children. I know it may be a little, you know, pediatric, but at the same time, it's a wonderful way to expose your little children to another culture in a way that they're going to be able to understand it. And the Mm -hmm. music is beautiful, and the movie's beautiful, and it's just such a lovely, lovely celebration. And Mimi, thank you for that. Yeah, and it's it's great to see that that this has become a holiday that that now has some meaning for you as well. Alisa, do you find that people who maybe didn't grow up with these celebrations, that Coco has given them a reference point? Yeah, I was about to say, the Book of Life and Coco particularly have really um, catapulted it to the more the mainstream. So, but that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, the more people know, the better for us, you know, and pe- people can be invited to celebrate. So that's actually a perfect transition. Thank you, Mimi, for, for giving us that transition. I know that um, that Elisa and Maria are here to talk a little bit about what's happening at the Missouri History Museum. So tell us about that celebration. Elisa, what are some of the highlights? So as I mentioned earlier, the altars. We've got about 15 altars that already started going up yesterday. They're beautiful. Um 
And like I mentioned before, the Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, is celebrated in most, not all Hispanic countries, but it's celebrated differently. So we've got altars from Peru and Bolivia, Mexico, Colombia. So different, um, you'll see different customs. And then, of course, we have um, music. We have uh, live bands there. And we have beautiful folkloric groups who will be dancing. We have two different ones. And Maria, are you you're a part of one of the dancing groups? Um I have, but this time I'm not. Okay. I'm, I'm doing an altar. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. That'll be your contribution. Be yes. <laughs> so these dancing groups, they're doing um, dances from Latin America? Yes. The, the, the two groups that we have are actually Mexican groups, and they will be doing a little bit of Aztec dance since that's where Day of the Dead originated from. Uh, so a little bit of Aztec, but then also uh, Mexican dances. And they'll be painted up and dressed up in beautiful costumes. Is there going to be food and drink? or? Yes, you cannot have a celebration <laughs> Thank you. without it. <laughs> so, I was hoping the answer would be yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. so we definitely have uh, tacos and uh, quesadillas and flautas, different uh, different Hispanic foods, and, of course, some hot dogs for those picky kids. Oh, wow. We all have them. Uh, and, of course, beer and margaritas and some so- and waters and sodas. So. so it sounds like there will be a really festive feeling. People don't need to feel like they have to come in with their somber face on. Oh, no. Um, we recommend bringing your whole family to come on out. Um, you come, eat, drink, enjoy. They are face painting the kids. All of them, you can just come and there's usually a little bit of a line, but you can come get face painted and there's an art exhibit that's pretty neat. And there'll be a lot of activities for the kids. Um, There's really a lot to do. And I think one thing that we're really looking forward to is on uh, Saturday early evening at uh, six o'clock, we're having a procession Mm. um, around outside around the History Museum. And if people want to come by for that, they don't even have to go inside the museum. They can can watch that. Exactly. Okay. Well, this sounds like a really exciting celebration that kicks off November 1st. Uh, Well, the official is a preview November 1st. You want to come, but the actual event is this Saturday and Sunday. This Saturday and Sunday. So, Elisa Bender, um, thank you so much for joining us today. And Maria Yaksik, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com. The Gateway brings you the day's news from the St. Louis region and across Missouri. It also includes stories from the Illinois side of the river and our Metro East reporter, Will Bauer. In Alton, in Belleville, in East St. Louis, in Edwardsville, in Cahokia Heights, at Scott Air Force Base, I'm Will Bauer, St. Louis Public Radio. Listen to reports from Will and all of our journalists weekdays on The Gateway, on the STLPR app, and wherever you get podcasts.